At this point, we've all heard how synthetic furnishings and the evolving methods and materials used in building construction are continuing to change the fire environment, leading to new challenges for the fire service. Fires today grow and spread faster than ever before. Where previously fires may have grown steadily from ignition to flashover and a fully developed state, today's fires are controlled by the amount of ventilation and oxygen available. As the fire grows rapidly, the available oxygen within the space is consumed and the fire transitions to an underventilated state, where the temperatures and pressures within the home begin to decline. This often occurs before the fire has ever even reached flashover. The available oxygen within homes today is often limited due to the construction practices which focus on energy efficiency leading to tighter buildings and minimal leakage. Because of the lack of oxygen within the home, the fire is now starved for air and any change in ventilation provides a new supply of oxygen which can lead to rapid fire growth and minimal reaction time for firefighters. One of the consistent themes seen throughout the research to date is the concept that ventilation must be coordinated with suppression. Coordination on the fire ground begins with the very first fire service intervention, which is typically when the arriving crews force the front door for entry. Knowing that the fire is most likely in a ventilation controlled state, firefighters must be aware that opening the front door for entry is providing the fire with a new source of oxygen. Conditions may begin to deteriorate as the fire begins to regrow and move towards the front door. The speed of regrowth and the reaction time for firefighters occupying the space is all dependent on the proximity of the fire to the now open vent. The opening of the front door should be coordinated with a charged hose line and firefighters dressed and ready for entry. Depending on the extent of fire development prior to going vent limited, the fire may regrow quick enough to prevent firefighters from entering the building. However, many times firefighters are able to enter the structure to begin search and rescue before the fire makes it to the front door. This can place firefighters in a dangerous spot as they advance down the flow path to the seat of the fire. Firefighters should always be aware that once the front door has been opened, a new flow path has now been created and the fire will continue to grow and move towards this open, low pressure vent until it's controlled via suppression. Forcing the front door needs to be considered in the same way as any other form of horizontal ventilation. In many cases, the front door can allow for quicker regrowth because the open doorway goes to the floor which allows the denser, cooler air to work its way in low along the floor when compared to a window which is higher in the space and less efficient at entraining air. Prior to opening the door for entry, crews must ensure that face pieces are on, firefighters are breathing air, and lines are charged so that the transition to the interior can occur quickly. Don't forget to make a quick observation of conditions at the front door when you open it. Where is the neutral plane? Do you notice any fresh air being drawn in or any gravity current to point you in the direction of the fire? What is the smoke doing? How about the color, density, and velocity? As you enter the building, you must be aware that you are now entering into a new flow path, which means that the fire is going to be growing and coming towards you, seeking the path of least resistance until water's flowing and you've gained control of the situation. If the front door is open for firefighter entry, it's also open for air. Tactical discipline with forcible entry and coordination with suppression are key.